After many years of research and development by the SpaceX team, the Starship is finally getting near its first orbital flight. The pieces are finally coming together for one of the most anticipated events in the space industry. This has turned SpaceX's Boca Chica facility into a beehive of activity as employees work around the clock to get everything right for the big day. However, how ready is the Starship for its first orbital flight? Join us as we explore how SpaceX is finally taking the Starship orbital. With the Starship, SpaceX has the job of lifting one of the tallest objects to space. Even in photos and videos, the Starship is enormously impressive. Each stage is a behemoth of mighty proportions. The booster, known as the Super Heavy, is 70 meters tall and made from steel. Its diameter is 9 meters and can hold 3,400 tons of propellant. This mighty rocket can produce a thrust of 72 meganewtons with a gross liftoff mass of over 3 million kilograms. In its current iteration, the Super Heavy will use 29 powerful Raptor engines designed in-house by SpaceX. They use a mixture of subcooled liquid methane and liquid oxygen as propellants. After seeing the upper stage safely to orbit, the Super Heavy will return, perform some turning maneuvers, and land. SpaceX has updated how the Super Heavy will land so that it's easily and quickly reusable. Elon Musk promises a turnaround time of about an hour from one flight to the next one. This unusual type of landing will be made possible by a pair of arms, or the Mechazilla, that will grab the Super Heavy mid-air and return it to its base. The reusability will cut down the cost of space travel, according to Musk. Sitting atop the Super Heavy is the Starship, or Ship, a 50-meter colossus, also made from steel. However, one side of the ship will be covered with heat-resistant tiles to protect the enormous heat generated when it returns to the Earth. Yes, the Starship will be fully reusable like its booster. Powering the ship are about half a dozen Raptor engines. In this case, though, the Raptor engines are a mixture of the sea level and vacuum variants, because the ship will need the former to land and the latter to travel through space. Musk has said the ship too would be caught mid-air, although it will have retractable legs to land on the Moon or Mars before they get their own Mechazillas. The expectations on the Starship are as huge as its physical dimensions. It will power Musk's dream of putting people permanently on Mars. This dream will involve many trips between the Earth and the Red Planet, as many tons of supplies will have to be moved ahead of the colonizers to make the planet habitable. Once Mars is sufficiently prepared, the Starship will start taking humans in batches of about 100 through the vast distance between the two planets. This is why SpaceX is focused on making the Starship reusable to cut both cost and time. Before that happens, though, NASA would have used the Starship to land its astronauts on the Moon in 2024 in its Project Artemis. This time, NASA is sending a more diverse team that will include a woman and a black astronaut. The cost to NASA to use the Starship is $2.9 billion, but delays from the team's spacesuit maker and Blue Origin's lawsuit might push it further. Interestingly, NASA also hopes to go to Mars with the Starship, although the agency will send astronauts instead of civilians. Another big name monitoring the progress of the Starship is the US military, who wants to use it to transport heavy cargo and personnel right here on the planet. It would be faster and cheaper than existing means. With SpaceX kicking off its space tourism business by sending billionaire Jared Isaacman and his crew off with Flight Inspiration 4, the Starship could take over as the space vehicle of choice when it is ready. This brings us to what stage of readiness the Starship is. After acing tests of the Starship prototype on May 5th, SpaceX has now turned its attention to sending the Starship to orbit for the first time. It will involve the Super Heavy and Upper Stage coming together or being stacked, which has already happened with lots of fanfare. For this orbital test, both the Super Heavy and Starship will return to land on planet Earth. From its filing with the Federal Communications Commission FCC, the Starship will lift off from the Boca Chica launch facility. Three minutes into the flight, the two stages will separate and the Super Heavy will splash down in the Gulf of Mexico, about 20 miles from the shore. The ship will continue over the Straits of Florida before entering orbit and then returning to Earth. It will also land on water, about 62 miles into the ocean from the coast of Kauai. All these will take place in less than an hour, but SpaceX would have made history. 
The Super Heavy prototype B4 will blast off the Starship, and SpaceX has been working hard to get it ready. It was briefly mated with a ship on the launch pad and fitted with 29 Raptor engines, but SpaceX quickly rolled it back to the building site for more work. The additional work has been on integrating the Raptor engines with hundreds of feet of wiring, more gas and fluid lines, and compressed gas tanks. The B-4 is back on the launch site with 29 Raptor engines once again. The ones on the outer ring will each have a small umbilical panel that will connect to the orbital launch pad's ground system. During the first appearance of the Starship, most of the individual engine connectors were yet to be installed. However, this time, SpaceX has installed all 20 engine umbilical actuators on the launch mount. Significant Significantly, SpaceX has never fired all 29 engines on the Super Heavy. The Super Heavy Booster 3 had a static fire test, but only with three Raptors. We are looking forward to the moment the Super Heavy will ignite more than 3,000 tons of fuel and become the most powerful rocket booster ever tested. That may not be so far off as Musk promised a static fire test in a week on Twitter. The ship, that is the S-20 prototype, is going through a fast-paced makeover. Much attention has been on the tiles, rightfully so because without them, the Starship will get badly damaged during the re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. The black hexagonal tiles first appeared when the ship was stacked on to the booster, turning the upper stage into a two-faced monster. SpaceX is plastering only one side of the ship with heat-resistant tiles, which are the size of a dinner plate. When SpaceX is done, it would have fixed about 15,000 tiles on the ship. Each tile is held in place by a set of three pins welded onto the ship's hull. Under it is a layer of fire-retardant insulation. Fixing the tiles, however, is a painstaking job as each tile is manually inspected for damage. SpaceX is using colors to mark the status of the tiles, with red signifying defect or damage and green for the ones not properly fixed. For weeks, a SpaceX crew has been replacing the ones marked red and repositioning the ones marked green. At present, the nose cone has been covered, with only the spaces for hooks not covered by the black tiles. All the color markings are gone. The S-22 was stripped of its Raptor engines after the first stacking. It is now resting on suborbital pan B with all its Raptors back. With all the Raptors reinstalled, it is safe to assume SpaceX has completed or almost completed the plumbing, avionics, and tankage works. SpaceX is yet to fire more than three Raptors on an upper stage prototype, so we are also looking forward to that one, but we might be getting closer to both cryogenic and static fire testing. The last hurdle for the Starship before going to orbit is approval from the Environmental Protection Agency EPA. That approval, however, is being delayed by an environmental impact test. If SpaceX can obtain it, the orbital flight might take place before December. Let us know what you think of SpaceX taking the Starship to orbit in the comments below.